Hi guys, welcome back to my vlog. <laughs> Today I'm super super excited because not only am I about to eat a bunch of really good Korean food, but my friend Margaret, who I feel like is kind of famous, maybe that's just in my head just because I've, I've talked about her on this vlog several times, is here with me and I'm going to formally introduce her to you guys. Say hi Margaret. Hello everyone. <laughs> Margaret is the reason that I moved to South Korea in the first place. It took her an hour to convince me to completely change my life plans and move across the world, so if that gives you any idea how persuasive she is. That's all you need to know about her. But we are about to eat um, green onion pancakes. And we also have all of these great side dishes. We have radishes, kimchi, anchovies, bean sprouts. What was this one? I don't know. We're not, we're not sure what that one is. And we think that could be squid, but we're also not sure. I'm not a picky eater, except that I am also a picky eater because I don't eat any meat. <laughs> she eats seafood. I eat seafood sometimes. Um, so we are going to eat all this food. I'm super excited. I okay, so the tofu seafood stew that we ordered just came out and it is still bubbling. Like if that does not look delicious, I honestly don't know what does. And it smells... I know this is cliche, but like the smell of vision I really wish it were a thing because it smells so good and you guys have no way to know that. But this, yeah, this is going to be amazing. And if it's not, the smell is going to be a huge letdown. Now our green onion pancake, which, how do you say this in Korean, Margaret? Hachong. Hachong. Just came out and I'm super excited for this, you guys. When Margaret and I were in America and on the day that she convinced me to move to South Korea, we got Korean food in Asheville and we had kimchi jeon, like kimchi pancakes. Mm -hmm. So this is almost like coming full circle. Like we went from eating this in Asheville together when I was like, yeah, what the heck, I'll move to South Korea to now eating it together in South Korea. Exactly. This is a big moment for our friendship, I think. We've made it. We've made it. <laughs> what we thought might be squid is not. Is it a vegetable? It's a vegetable, but it's very good. This is so good, you guys. It's like crunchy, all these vegetables in it. There's an egg in it. And what is there to dislike about this? And it's fried. Okay, so that's all the tofu in this. I love tofu, it's one of my favorites. I'm really excited about this one. almost finished with this stew and it is honestly fantastic I want to go ask for the recipe because it's like the perfect amount of spicy the tofu is really good there are like crispy bits of green onion and then like chewy pieces of some kind of seafood probably squid I don't really know my seafood very well I had it with a little bit of rice but it didn't even need the rice honestly it would have been perfect on its own I think it's shrimp in there <laughs> maybe it's shrimp yeah you might be right about that I'm trying to be a better vlogger because <laughs> we almost got up and left and I didn't even close out anything about this meal. It was fantastic. I didn't eat burn. that much but it was really good. But we did at the same time. Like I'm going to show you guys. We ate a lot of food. We ate so much but it still looks like there's so much on this table. Because there's a lot of food. They give you a lot of food. A lot of food and a lot of side dishes and you only take like little bites of everything. So you eat a ton but it looks like you ate nothing. Anyway. This was fantastic. Definitely have to come back to this place. I feel like little restaurants like this often have the best food. Like avoid going to really, really big restaurants. If you find a little restaurant on a little street, they're probably going to have the best stuff. So now I think we're going to go to a cafe called The Onion, which is supposed to be very famous and very, very good. Margaret's been several times. <laughs> um, I've never been. So we're going to get some coffee and we're going to get probably more street more pastries than we can eat reasonably too um but that's what today's about is eating and then we are going to a museum later so i'm very excited about that oh, i already forgot about that yeah i know the day is just it's just getting started so very excited about that because y'all know that museums are my favorite <laughs>
we're here at Onion and we're about to eat even more. But I think that desserts go in a different stomach than the food that you eat, so it's really fine. It doesn't actually count. <laughs> And they had vegan coffee, which you guys know I'm just a sucker for. So I got an oat milk latte. Very excited for that too. And I've actually been pleasantly surprised, as just like a side note, with how many vegan things I have found available here in Korea. I didn't expect anything. And there are actually a few places that I found that do have like oat milk and almond milk and soy milk, stuff like that. So that's awesome. So I think we're going to eat this and hang out here for a while. And then our plan is to, I think, go to the museum next. And then we're going to go on a bike ride too today. Because finally the air pollution is lifting a little bit. And I want to be outside because now the weather is really, really nice. they're using and things like that and then I also try to look at what my emotional response is to the art so 
Does it make me feel anxious? Does it make me feel angry? Do I kind of sense a narrative that's making me feel one way or the other? Or is it just because of the colors and shapes and subjects that the artist is using? So kind of keep that in mind when I show you the art that I'm going to be seeing because that is what I'm thinking about and that is how I am trying to process the art that I'm seeing when I don't have any context. Also, things like what's behind me, so all the gallery text is super, super useful and obviously helps to help you understand what the narrative is, help you understand the biography of the artist, things like that. about the guy in the green. Like the idea there was obviously it was representing a person who was just like maybe in a suit the entire time and you can't see their face and there's nothing about their identity that you can see. The whole idea of that is not only is the green directly representing a person who we can project whatever we want to onto them, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the association with like the green screen, but as the viewer looking at somebody whose identity we don't know and who you can't directly interact with because they're in this bubble that encapsulates them away from you mm -hmm. and there's no face for you to see, I just thought it gave, it was just a kind of an interesting take on like what the digital world does to us as people oh. by giving us this anonymity which viewers can reject whatever they want to want to you. Yeah. So that, of all of those, was probably like the most thought-provoking to me. You could convince me that was a real person in there. Exactly. That's and a really great I, That's also what I thought was really interesting about it, was because it was such a like, what's the word I'm looking for? You had like this gut reaction when you saw that, you were like, it looks like a real person. I feel like he's gonna move, he's gonna look at me. Yeah, that's he's what I say felt. something. Like, or he's just dead because he's suffocated. Yeah. yeah. It was not nice. Visceral. That's the word. Visceral. 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 You had a visceral reaction. Yes. And you did too. I'm sure the artist was probably going for that. Was like going for that super visceral reaction when you looked at that piece. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely what he achieved. You always want to pay attention to what your emotional response is when you see something and why that's your emotional response. And then I felt like the themes were also kind of artists grappling with like space, either geographical or conceptual space, mm. and where they where they belong in that. Like that one huge canvas that we saw with all the trees and how that was like biographical about place. And I'm exhausted now. <laughs> I'm like like mentally. Obviously everyone in the world doesn't think like see an art piece and think this is what is happening, right. this is what the world relates. Like sometimes people are like, I like this. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Which is okay too. I think I'm somewhere in the middle. Yeah. The trees, that painting, I love. Yes. Mostly just because it felt so familiar, so much like home. Yeah. And I doubt that person has ever seen some of the places I've seen. Yeah. It's like backwoods, Tennessee, North Carolina, right. Alabama. Like, and here you are in Seoul. And in a big city. Right, in a big city looking at artwork by a Korean person. Who has never been to any of the places I worked. So, yeah. that was super interesting. Hey y'all, it's Andy from the future. I am sitting here editing this vlog right now and I realize that unless you have a good description of this piece Margaret and I are about to talk about, it is pretty confusing. So the piece that we're discussing is Heterophony of Heterochrony from 2021 by the Korean artist Oh Min. And I will put a picture of it right here so you can see what it looks like, but it's really a video installation. So what it is, is a dark room, you go in and there are five video screens set up. Each of these video screens has a channel video that is just being shown. And it's essentially one person and the camera is panning around their face, the angle is changing and the lighting is changing. And every screen is showing the same video, but several seconds either ahead or behind of the screen next to it. So the effect is that even though you are consciously aware of the fact that you are seeing the same video, it's staggered and you are aware of the impact of the lighting and you're aware of the impact of the camera angle and just how extremely different these things look even though it's the same subject, even though it's done in one continuous shot in the same span of time, 
And even though the setting isn't changing, she's sitting on the same stool, wearing the same clothes and the same makeup the entire time. So it's a really cool effect and we both really enjoyed it. But the next part of what we're going to say is just a bit confusing unless you know exactly what this installation was. That one was super interesting to me because I was looking at it as how moments can look so different. Yes. Yes. Seconds apart. Mm -hmm. Seconds apart. And I'm like, look at it is sharp so... contrast. Lighting, like everything changes. Yes. The facial expression, like an emotion, anything mm -hmm. can change everything in a, in yes. a heartbeat. Yes. And then you combine them all and you're like, a person is the most chaotic thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Right? Yes, I know. Like, I feel like if you do that with an animal, like, you, have you ever seen, like, those, like, images on, I don't know, Animal Planet, and they're, like, watching an animal in, like, yes. every five seconds, but, like, at the same time, they don't really have emotions the same way right. people do, so they're, it doesn't change that much. Mm -hmm. They can look this way, this way, heartbeat, this way, but it still yes. doesn't feel that different. It's completely different. But a human, there's so much there. Yes. That second is... So different. So different, I know. Which was so interesting to me to see it all at the same time because I'm like, I it was a chaos of a human brain. Oh, I know. So that one was cool to me. That one was really cool too. And I also like I think I I think I think a lot more about videos since I make YouTube videos now. But honestly, like it made me think about Oh do you? <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. That was sad. <laughs> Yikes. Do you like <laughs> Sorry, videos? obviously don't because I'm the worst. <laughs> no, but it what it what it makes me think of is how easy it is to manipulate things mm. and how much little tweaks like camera angle and lighting will really affect what you see as a viewer. Yeah. And how the flip side of that is like you can make something look very, very beautiful and just breathtaking mm -hmm. on camera when in actuality under different lighting and different camera angles. Yeah, it's not gonna look that way. Sometimes the different cake, she looked so completely so different. different. And the different lighting, different like her lighting. skin looked different and her face looked different. Yeah. And like I think a lot more about how easy it is to manipulate things and change how you are portraying people to see you mm -hmm. in in videos because you have so much control over all of those things. And that insulation just yeah. kind of like proved that. But that's also like the world we live in now. Yeah. Everything is so manipulated. Yeah. It really is. There's this really, really, really weird dichotomy that's happening almost where you have less autonomy over your image because it so freely is put out there by like CCTV. You're in the back of other people's videos, like people who've been in the back of my vlog today, or you're in the back of pictures, or you're taking pictures and posting them of yourself online. So in some ways, like your image is just out there. Like you don't have any control over your own image, your own body. No, yeah. But in other ways, we have this really heightened sense of control over our own image. Yeah, because you can manipulate. So we can manipulate it. Okay, so sadly, there was nowhere to eat. Everywhere was closing. So instead, we're just calling it a night and she's going back to Incheon. I'm going back to Namyeongju. And that's gonna be it. But honestly, we did a lot today. I'm not even disappointed. Yeah. We did so much. We did a lot. The time went by really fast. Is it all seven hours at this point? We're seven hours in. Oh my gosh. Even, I don't even know what we did for seven hours. Yeah, we did so much for only seven hours. We did a lot. So it's classic. But that's also kind of thing. If you come out with a plan and then it doesn't work. And it doesn't work. That's part of the fun. Seven Korea. Yay. <laughs>